Do you love your creative push? Consider taking two minutes to leave a nice review on iTunes. By telling how the show has helped you, you'll help other people find it so they can help them too. If you need some simple instructions on how to do it, head to yourcreativepush.com slash review. Thank you in advance for leaving a review, and thank you again to those who already have. Your Creative Push, episode 224. If you already paint, but you're hesitant about whether you should make it a career, just work and work and work. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I am your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Marta Neal. Marta is a Spanish artist currently working for Ediciones Babylon as an artist and art director. She has a love for all painting techniques using both digital and traditional media. After completing her fine arts degree, she specialized in concept art and matte painting. This allowed her to develop her own style, which could be described as a game of light and color, or digital impressionism when it comes to digital media. Marta has published four books, and her latest being Sketchbook 2. Marta, welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, Hi. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) Uh, Doing very well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Um, so I was hoping maybe we could start out by uh, with you kind of sharing how you got to the point you are today in your creative career, uh, a brief kind of bio, if you will. Sure. I would say that I've been drawing as far back as I can recall. I remember myself painting and drawing and always having, you know, crayons and pencils in my hands. And my clothes were always dirty and full of paint, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also my first memory would, would be when I was at elementary school and my teacher told my parents to enroll me to an art course after finishing my classes. And there I started to use acrylic oils and pastels. So I would say that my love for art began at an early age. Also, at um, high school, I used to draw on my notebooks with my pen. And I would say that I was uh, quite a good student, so they didn't complain about that, (laughs) which was fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I was really lucky. And I also remembered always telling people that I want to be an artist. And I guess that they thought that I would change my mind (laughs) when I grew up, but I didn't. (laughs) So I started to study fine arts. And first day, I would say, was really shocking because I had spent my whole life copying masters and doing studies, and they wanted me to create and do it with my own style, which was something really new to me. And also, I felt frustrated because they preferred contemporary art, and it was definitely not my thing. But yes, I started to improve uh, my style, I guess, uh, because I moved from painting to drawing where I could paint from leaf model. I believe that sketches help you capture the whole mood because you have to paint something in just a few minutes. And also, I would say that in fine arts, I started to play with light and color and this defined me as an artist later. Last year, I remember that I moved from um, traditional to digital. I wanted to try it out. And also, I started to upload uh, my paintings to social networks. And due to that, I guess that I had my first commissions. It was six years ago when I started working for Ediciones Babylon. And yes, as you said, I've published for ad books and that's it. This is where I am today. (laughs) Very cool. Got us up to speed. (laughs) Uh, I wanted to kind of touch on the idea of traditional style and that wasn't really for you. And you kind of had your own type of direction that you wanted to go with your own style. So when your, I guess your art professors were kind of pushing you to go in a different direction, is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, maybe because I would say that people uh, usually start with a line sketch Mm -hmm. And they introduced me to a different kind of process where you had to start uh, filling the whole canvas with a neutral color similar to the 
color scheme you have in mind, you know, and then uh, you go about um, defining surfaces by adding color and erasing color and then painting over it, but you can also erase it again. So it's some sort of uh, sculpture process where you paint the background and the character at the same time. I found it really interesting because it was uh, different to what people usually do. So um, the only problem was with the subject because uh, they wanted me to do different subjects to what I'm used to painting, like uh, women or, or virus. They wanted me to paint, I don't know, maybe paint some rubbish and some things that are next to you, but they didn't make sense because it was like uh, destroy everything or I don't know how to mm -hmm. say that. So yes, and then when I moved to drawing classes in fine arts, the professors were different and they introduced me to this kind of different process um, based in light and color. Right. And I think that subject matter is really important for, for any type of creative person, especially uh, visual artists. So if somebody's asking you to paint something that you are totally uninterested in, it, it makes no sense. Why would you do that? You know? Yeah. So uh, I think the advice there is to kind of inspire, despite what kind of people want you to do, especially if you're in school, is to do that thing that you want to do because otherwise there's really no point. Yeah, sure. But I, I know that uh, you have to follow some guidelines that, and professors know more than you, that's for sure. But yes, a subject is really important. And I also believe that I wasn't good enough creating, so I had to improve my skills uh, regarding studies. And as I said, uh, doing leaf model really helped me. So I would say that maybe because of that, I prefer painting women. Um, and also because I believe they, they are more beautiful when you want to paint. Not because uh, guys are... In, you know, a good thing to, to paint. But I believe that women are more interesting. Maybe the the forms or the dynamism they have, you know, I don't know if that makes sense what I say. Well, as a guy, I would definitely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering, could you talk a little bit about the transition then from uh, traditional art to digital art? You said you started that uh, your last year uh, at, at school? Mm, yes, at fine arts, but they were completely against it they wanted me just to use traditional media but in my last year i had to do i don't know how you say that um your final like a senior portfolio yeah, something, something like that and i saw some matte paintings some dylan cole and Raphael lacoste matte paintings and i thought i want to do that i want to be able to do that so i started to try out um, digital media. I remember a professor told me that they would have gave me a better mark if I, it was traditional. And I said, why? It's just a technique and you're painting as well. But it, they, they have that kind of thought that if you're using digital, um, the program will make everything for you or something like that. Which is not the case. No, because um, it's just the same. You're painting. It's just a different technique. Right. And I think that's kind of a mindset that obviously, you know, professors or people that have been doing it for a long time, that's their thing. <laughs> you know, they they know that world so well, the traditional art. And I think that that's something that holds a lot of people back. And that, that's a question that I've been asking a lot of artists recently that, that do use digital painting is how to get past that block that I think some people have that they think that when they delve into the digital world, they use the, these digital tools that it's um, cheating or, or something in a way, or it's not authentic, if that makes sense. So how do you get past that? I believe that each one brings you a different opportunity to improve your skills. So each one has its pros and cons. Maybe if you choose digital, you can create any color you want, because I would say you can use really vibrant colors and maybe traditional has more travel in this regard it's the only thing i would say and but yes as you said traditional art also has more value because you have an original painting which is unique but i would say that i love both techniques and maybe if i'm painting digital uh, one day then the next day i will paint with traditional media 
So it's most fine for me. <laughs> so as you mentioned, like your professors were kind of pushing you to, obviously, they said you'd get a better mark if you had done it traditionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it fair to say that you were like completely self-taught then when it comes to digital uh, painting? I wouldn't say that. I, I was trying digital on my own, yes, but I was always checking artists' works. So they inspired me a lot. And I was also looking at some tutorials and videos. <laughs> and does that same type of kind of getting inspiration from other people, does that apply to uh, when it comes to coming up with concepts? Because like when it comes to concept art, I think obviously the key word there is is concept. So how do you come up with your concepts? Do you wait till you have an idea in your head and then get to work? Or do you um, do some kind of other like exploration, like looking at other artists to help you kind of come up with an idea? Um, I believe it's a bit of both. I spend a lot of time browsing through a uh, a uh, folder I have, which is kind of inspiration folder. And also, um, I follow loads of artists at social networks. So I, maybe I spend just one day uh, looking at different work to get inspired. And also, uh, well, if it's a commission, you know, you have some indications. But um, I would say I'm really lucky because my clients are always really comprehensive and give me so much artistic freedom. But if I had to name a few artists that inspire me, I would say that Turner and Spanish artist Sorolla too, because of the, their use of color. So my influences uh, are mainly traditional, but also, as I mentioned, digital as Dylan Cole and Rafael Lacoste because of their matte paintings, James Gurney and Nathan Fox because of their use of color too. Um, also, uh, I would say that fantasy and Sifi inspired me a lot. It was because of my dad, which was really into this kind of book and, and films, you know, Tolkien and Star Wars series, for example. Absolutely. And speaking of that, because uh, a lot of your work um, is really cool. I, I'm kind of a nerd and I love Star Wars and I love, you know, all those kind of fantasy movies and that you definitely implement those things into your work. Was that something that you've always done or is that something that kind of developed over time using the things that you love to like be, actually be a part of your work, like as a form of like kind of fan art? I would say that as an artist, I'm always uh, getting inspired by what surrounds me. So if you love something, it's, it's, kind of uh, normal that you want to paint that and um but i have this sort of um feeling that some people usually use fan art just to grow their audience because it's something which um, will likely love everyone if they're a fan of you know that film or that book i love doing fan art but also feel like maybe it's something like kind of cheating or something like that. I don't know how to say that. Um, but I've done some fan art in the past, and but they were mainly commissioned. But uh, I don't know if you know my work. I have several um, artworks, like I did Gandalf painting a while ago, and it was for a dubbing festival, a Spanish dubbing festival. Another one, which is, um, you, you mentioned it <laughs> in the Marilyn Monroe with Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks. And that one was... Dar Darth Monroe. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I love it. And that one was for a festival too, for um cinema festival. They wanted me to portray a, like a really strong woman. And mm -hmm. I thought, okay, what can I do here? And so I try to convey like um, something which is really important in in the industry, in the cinema industry, like is Star Bader, with a um, woman which was really important for cinema, like Marilyn Monroe. And I said, okay, maybe people will hate me because of that, but I, I will <laughs> give it a try. And people were like, what the hell is this? But they at the same time love it. So yeah, that was really, really great. So thanks also for saying that <laughs> this, this is where you love that work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, 
the only people that are going to be mad at you are like nerds like me, but like the nerds <laughs> that are like super hardcore, like, no, Darth Vader was like, <laughs> the strongest Sith Lord, you know, yeah. but uh, I think it's, it's so cool what you did with that, with that piece in particular. And I can't wait to like buy it and hang it up in my house. <laughs> I think that, Thanks. yeah, it's like a perfect kind of combination. So like when you come up with like a really awesome idea like that, um, and you talked before about kind of having an ideas folder as well, which is something that I do as a writer and something that I promote people to do whenever you get an idea, kind of write it down and then, you know, go back to it later to see if it kind of, you know, you can mix it with something else. So what I wanted to ask you is when you are looking through for inspiration to come up with a concept or looking at other artists and trying to uh, come up with an idea what's the moment like where you're like, okay, yes, this is it. This is what I'm going to create. Like, how do you become sure that the next thing is what you're going to do? That that thing is like the idea that you're going to actually take forward and start to create. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I always start by, um, I don't know, doing several sketches and a character, which is, uh, taking, I don't know how you say that, um, different compositions Mm -hmm. and try to, I don't know how, which moment makes me feel like it's the correct one, but uh, you know it. Uh, it's it's like this one will work when I paint this and when I finish it. And maybe it's because the whole mood can be perceived at first sight because you can imagine it in your head and say, yeah, it will work like that. So you, you come up with like a overall concept and then you put that kind of character into different positions or different um situations if that makes yes. sense yeah yes. and then whichever then a, a, there's kind of a eureka moment <laughs> where it's like oh yeah this is the one but it's yes. like experimenting <laughs> until you get to that point yes uh but also there is that moment when you have to if you have a, a commission you have to send several sketches to to your client and maybe you want um, that he, uh, they choose a sketch a particular sketch and you send them four and they choose the one you hate the most and it's like (laughs) no you have to choose the other one (laughs) what happens when when that when that does happen like what do you what do you do do you like try to convince them to pick a different one or do you just go with it uh sometimes i i i tell them uh, maybe that one will work better because of this and this and this (laughs) and Mm -hmm. sometimes it works (laughs) well and that's the other thing too about like not only i guess commissions but also fans like whenever you post something on social media and one piece that like you didn't really particularly like you know really takes off and gets like way more likes than usual and then on the same token when it's something that you love and you're like oh they're gonna love this doesn't get as much love i guess it's just one of those things where you kind of have to put out your concept and put out your vision and then just you know let people interpret it however they want yes um this happens sometimes and it's quite weird because maybe there's a work which you are really fond of and then you put it into social media and people feel like um no it's not your best work but then as you said um you do something and you feel like i I don't know if i should uh, put it into social media because i'm not sure and then it has (laughs) tons of likes and shares yes i guess we all depend on people it's always great to to see how how they interpret uh, everything and and how their vision is different to yours so it's it's really it's always great to know how they feel about your art absolutely i agree so i was wondering do you have any like resistances any things that hold you back maybe that 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 have held you back in the past or maybe that they still do uh, when it comes to getting to your creative work in the past, I would say that maybe my parents were a bit concerned that I wouldn't generate enough income, you know, with art. Mm. <laughs> when I was younger, they tried to encourage me to pursue another career path, a more traditional one. But uh, I believe that they also thought that I was, I don't know, trying to to follow my true passion and they kind of understood that they had to support my decision. Um, maybe nowadays I would say routine or when I feel that I'm not getting better or getting stuck with a painting. Um, so yes, maybe my own inner demons, you know, <laughs> maybe we sometimes are our worst enemy. 
And that's my my only fear, as I said, when I want to upload something, I feel like maybe it's not good enough and people won't like it and that's it. So I'd like to touch on both of those things. I, th I think that the whole parents thing or, you know, friends and family, it, they're always <laughs> trying to look out for your best interest. But at the same time, like not having that support is always tough. And I think a lot of people have gone through that or, or are currently going through that where they're not getting the support from the parents. It, it makes sense be in a way because it's, you know, a tough thing and they don't want to see you struggle to make money. So have you proven it to them at this point? Like, are they satisfied with w what you've cho chosen to do? Yeah, I think so. I believe that they saw that I was doing my best and working really hard to go where I wanted to be. I think that they're kind of um, happy with, you know, where I am today. Uh, but my family, my parents were really um, worried because I'm only, I'm their only daughter too. So it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when when you're in an only son, then it's it's worse <laughs> for in some aspects. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that they're happy right now, and they're always kind of, you know, this is what my daughter does and it's kind of beautiful. So look at it. And so they're spreading my work <laughs> amongst their friends. So now they, oh. they're happy now. <laughs> right. Um, and so then how did you start to, to make money and to earn a living uh, through your art? What was that kind of process like to go from just creating art in school and doing it for fun and doing it for yourself to actually selling it to somebody and, and making money? I would say that I was quite lucky because I was finishing my fine arts degree and I started to have my first commissions. I believe it was the, a year later when I started to work for Ediciones Babylon and that was, you know, an, I don't know how to say that, like constant income because it, each month I have I had my money and also I worked as a freelance and had different commissions at really, really early when maybe yes, um, when I was finishing my fine arts degree. Yes, as I said, I was really, really lucky. This is what makes you keep uh, working harder. And maybe other people would feel like, yes, I'm quite good at it, but I wouldn't feel like that. I was just working harder and maybe spending 12 hours a day painting if I had to meet my deadlines or if I had to deliver commissions on time. Right. And I'm, I'm sure once, you know, the money started coming in and you had a proof of concept, if that makes sense, that you, you could prove your parents, you know, okay, this is a, a viable ah, yes. thing that I'm, I'm trying to do. <laughs> yes, yes. That was like, you, you can see uh, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And so, and then the second thing you talked about, which is something that I think almost everybody struggles with is that idea of, you know, having your own inner demons be kind of the worst of, yes. of, of your demons. And so whenever you get that, that piece that you're like, ah, oh, I don't know if this is good and people won't like it. How do you then get the strength or the courage to, you know, upload it and post it anyway, to share it to people? Um, sometimes I, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I have some some artwork which I've never uploaded anywhere. Right, of course, yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to social media, you have that sort of um, feeling that if you want to upload something, people will forget that you're there. Or sometimes if I don't have anything to upload, I say, okay, let's give it a try and let's upload that piece that um, you don't like. But that's it. Um, I would say. Yeah, it's kind of waiting, maybe like holding off on that, that one particular piece that you're not completely confident about until you do have that kind of lull where yes. you're like, all right, this is like a, a downtime and I need to need to post something to keep my fans happy, to keep the uh, keep the peeps happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Marta, I was wondering, do you have uh, either a best or a worst moment when it comes to your creative uh, career? Um, when you have to paint daily, you lose that freshness that you have when you paint whenever you want because you have to paint to to generate income, you know? And so it's like you lose that sense of um, being your passion. It's like art is your work and not your passion anymore. So when I get home, I feel like I don't want to paint anymore and not even touch a pencil, you know? <laughs> 
I feel kind of sad because I used to be painting uh, when I lived with my parents uh, the whole time. And maybe I was at home and my parents told me, you should go out. And as, uh, I would say, uh, no, I will stay home because I want to finish this painting. So maybe it's, this is the hardest time in this regard, you know. Yeah, and I think you touched on one of the the main themes of this podcast is especially when people have a full-time job that isn't in the creative interest that they have, like me for example, when I come home from work, <laughs> I actually just got home, I just got home from work an hour ago and it's like you, you just, you know, don't, th- this of course is easy. Like this is wonderful to be able to talk to to somebody and just have a conversation about this stuff. But, you know, when it comes to editing or, you know, uh, even the, the writing, it's like you just are drained from all that work and you just, you know, the last thing you want to do is is more work. So do you have any tips then for people to um, when their creative passion turns into something that feels like work and it feels like a job and you don't have that kind of passion anymore um, to kind of get past that? I would say that when you're at that moment when you feel like, I'm, I'm kind of nervous and in, I'm stuck and nothing is going right. Then if you're doing, for example, digital, then you can move to traditional or uh, on the other way around, for example, or go out a bit and have some beers with your friends. And then maybe later will everything will go smoothly. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's what I try to do because as I said, it's kind of sad feeling that painting is your work and not your passion anymore. So it's it's kind of difficult for me, still difficult for me. I love art, and, but I love also, I don't know, um, reading or playing the guitar. And, and so I try to find a balance between working and, I don't know, doing other, other things that I love. And, but yeah, sometimes... Maybe there's one day where you think you feel um, I was I will spend uh, 12 hours and I wouldn't do anything right. And maybe another day with one hour, you're doing more than the last uh, couple of days. I don't know. I would always give the same advice that you have to work, work, work and work again and work harder. If you get stuck, just change, go and do another thing <laughs> and then come back and everything will go fine. Right. It's all about that balance. And I think the the advice as well is to enjoy your creative passion, like to have that time be like a passion and where it doesn't feel like work. And then it, when it starts to feel like work, that is like your body or your mind telling you that you do need a little bit of a break. But then when you're taking the break to like actually take a break, I know for me, something that I struggle with is when I'm taking a break, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the day off <laughs> or I'm going to take you know, this hour off, I'm going to watch this show that I haven't watched or a movie, go to the movies to not think about the work that still needs to get done that you're taking a break from, you know, to really be in the moment, if that makes sense. That's something that I struggle with, but it's yeah, something yeah, that yeah. I'm really, really trying really hard to enjoy the, the time that I do take off to kind of enjoy that time. It happens to me too. And um, because especially if you have your cell phone with you, because you can always, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you're maybe you're yeah. at the cinema and you're like, Oh, I like that. And, and I'm, I'm going to browse and browse it. And, and then I'm going to save it to that um, folder and everything, you know, and mm-hmm. also because you're always getting inspired by what surrounds you. So you can see your work everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, maybe mm. in a, when you're looking at a friend and then some light is touching his, you know, his skin or her skin. And then you feel like, oh, this, I want to capture that and then add it to my painting later. And yes, it's like you're always, if you're an artist or writer or whatever, which is related to, to art and being creative, you're kind of chaotic people. I don't know if that makes sense. And you're always an artist. It's not like a job. It's like a kind of a, a way of life or something like that. Yeah. It's like you see the, you see the world through that lens as yes. a, yeah. And you can't, it's like, you can't turn it off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Um, so with all the different things that you do have going on, um, we kind of already talked about this, but do you have like a formula for balancing your time? I think that I, I spend the whole time doing um, commissions and I wouldn't say that I do personal stuff a lot. I just try to balance um, like the the commission and try to 
make it my own and like, as if it was my work, my personal work, if that makes sense. Maybe if, if they ask me to paint something which I don't like, then I try to to add something which make it uh, different and kind of unique, even if it's something that I don't like. So I feel kind of frustrated because of that, because I'm always thinking about work and commissions and I don't have much uh, freedom when it comes to painting personal work. Maybe when I do traditional paintings, I usually paint traditional uh, sketches and paintings um, for me and then try to sell them. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not like commission work usually, but when it comes to digital, it's mainly commissions. I got you. That makes sense. I wanted to talk about your books, or in particular your your newest book, uh, Sketchbook Two. Mm-hmm. Is that just uh, the the second iteration? Um, it's because um, when I, I did the first sketchbook, first sketchbook one, and this one is uh, Sketchbook Two, which is really different for, from the first one. Uh, and, at least to me, because um, it meant something trying to make it more personal. It has different series. Um, I, there's one which is Stardust, another one which is Intertwined Lovers. It's like some particular process that I had uh, for the past two years. I was at a kind of personal bad moment. So I think that since we are artist this is really noticeable when you're painting i would say that in it has some some sort of uh, sentences written in next to some art artworks which are more personal than maybe some people would would think when they look at uh, at it and i would say that it also helped me experience i don't know um to paint different with more color and more light and try to improve my skills in that uh, regard. And when you're feeling worse, sometimes it, it, it has some positive aspects too, like being more creative at, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if that happens to you too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yes, well, that's it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and where can people get the book? At Ediciones Babylon website um, or Amazon too. Okay, cool. And we will have that linked up then at the show notes page today at yourcreativepush.com slash Marta Nail. Thanks. <laughs> oh, of course. Marta, uh, before we let you go, it's time for the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today. Uh, so just give your best words of advice and really push somebody to pursue their creative passions. Sure. I would say that if you want something, just go for it. And you have to follow your dreams, live your life the way you want, since you only have one life. (laughs) And if you already paint, but you're hesitant about whether you should make it a career, just work and work and work. And when you think you're done and when you think you're improving, then work harder. And maybe never give up on your dreams. And this way you will overcome your limits and you will be happy and and feel fulfilled. (laughs) Absolutely. I love that. Work, 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 practice, practice, practice. (laughs) When you think you're done, work harder because there's always room to improve and you can always push the needle further. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marta, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And it was really great talking to you. And I hope that people find it useful. (laughs) Absolutely. I know that they will. You can find Marta on ArtStation. She is Marta Nail. Uh, on Instagram, she is Marta Nail. And on Facebook, she is Marta Nail Art. And that is M A R T A N A E L A R T. And you can find everything we talked about today again at today's show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Marta Nail. Marta, thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I thank you once again to Marta for coming on the show. She brings up two really important resistances that I think a lot of us go through or have gone through in, in our creative lives. And the first being the lack of support from your parents. And I know that there's a lot of young people that listen to this show, so this is really applicable to you. But it's a completely valid concern, at least in their eyes, uh, because they want the best for you. They want 
you to have an easy life when it comes to making money that they won't have to worry about you and you won't have to worry about yourself. And I think that in today's world, you can become whatever you want to be. You can find a way, a path to make money from your art, from your creative passion, whatever it is. But it requires you to start to go down that journey, to start to learn how to make money, to start to learn that there are people out there that are willing to give you cash for your art. Your art is that important in the world that it has dollar signs next to it. And the better you become at your art, the more that you practice your art, the more that you research ways to make money from your art, the easier that path will seem. And especially if your parents or your loved ones do not think that this is a possibility, show them that it's a possibility. Tell them how important this thing is to you. And if you were able to make this thing into your career for the rest of your life, how happy you would be from it, I think that they might understand and might be able to get on board with your goals so that it's easier for you to go down this path that is scary. But any path is scary when you are talking about going into the real world, especially when it comes to putting food on the table and a roof over your head. So the takeaway is to respect the people that don't necessarily think that you are on the right path to understand where they're coming from, but to show them wrong, to show them how talented you are, to show them how much work you're willing to put into it, and to show them that it is possible that other people have made a career for themselves in this way and that you can do it too. All it takes is your passion and your hard work. And the second thing that uh, Marta dealt with that I think we all deal with is those inner demons that she was talking about, that self-doubt, those voices in your head that tell you that what you just spent all that time creating really isn't good enough. And you can start to see the flaws in it, and you think that everybody else on the internet will be able to see those flaws once you post it. And that's something that can hold a lot of us back from building an audience, from sharing our work, from moving on to the next piece of work because we are too much of a perfectionist and try to fix all those things before we post it up. But it's so important to get by that so you can build an audience, so that you can move on to the next thing, and so that you can continue to get better. And like Marta said, some pieces are not meant to see the light of day. They're just meant to be kind of stored away and for your eyes only. But knowing the difference is something that comes from not only intuition, but experience and experience to trust that intuition what really isn't your best work and what is actually great work, but you're just telling yourself that it isn't great work. And that comes from doing it over and over again and really getting experience of telling that voice in your head to shut up so that you can actually critique your work with an honest eye, with a gut check. And we actually get into that next episode with Amy Koretsky, who is a health coach, an acupuncturist, an herbalist, And she works with creative entrepreneurs to not only be their healthiest selves, but to be in touch with your gut, to be in touch with what your body and your mind is telling you about your life and your creative work. And you can find her at amykoretsky.com. That's A-M-Y-K-U-R-E-T-S-K-Y.com. And on Instagram, she is Amy Koretsky. She also has a podcast called Health Fuels Hustle, which is on iTunes. We'll have that linked up on today's show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash 224. But my thanks again to Marta today for coming on the show to inspire you And hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. And we will be here for you on Monday if you need the push again. Have a wonderful, productive weekend. Head to the Facebook group to share the work that you've been creating this week at yourcreativepush.com slash group. I can't wait to see you there. But until Monday, have a wonderful weekend. I love you all. Go get to your creative passion. And we will see you next time. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.